Are you trying to figure out how to keep your lesson plans organized with this hybrid or online situation? Or maybe how to keep organized what your plan was versus what actually happened? In today's video, I'm going over how I'm using my teaching journal to keep all this organized using this really great layout that I've just started where it's the plan versus the reality. So if that interests you, go ahead and keep watching this video. Just to make sure we're on the same page, I'm using GoodNotes 4 as my PDF annotator app, which is what I use for my digital bullet journals. This journal is a free version that is available to you. I'll link it below. Uh, it only has three sections. The ones that you can buy yourself have 12 if you want to make it a regular planner. And then I had my full course, which has six sections, but it includes uh, over 30 page templates. So in this one, this is basically mimicking what my actual journal looks like. I do do this by hand um, for the moment at least because I'm using tech and so many other ways in the classroom that it's, it's easier sometimes just to write it down by hand if something unexpected comes up. But I'm basically sh showing you what my journal looks like as far as how it's organized. And so when you get into this one, obviously this is three sections in the free version. And so I have in my regular journal a section for each of the classes I teach. And so I teach two sections of the same course in C 1101, which makes life much easier for me. So it looks very similar. But when I have my journal, the first thing I have is a page or two with the most important information about my class. Then after that, I have my attendance sheet. And so I'm taking attendance via my LMS in, in class. But what I do have in my physical journal is the first names of all my students. And if there's names in, in common, I just put the uh, first initial or last name. And I have that in my journal just in case, again, the tech isn't working or I'm running out of time and I wanna just do it easier. I'll just go through the names on my journal and mark out if they're there or not on that particular day of that week. So I don't always use the physical journal for this, but I might do it if I need to for whatever reason. So this template comes with this free journal and so I just have two copies of it because I have more than 15 students or 16 students in my class. So that comes next in my journal. Now after that, these are the layouts that I just created, especially for this particular video. And it's because I've been using this layout in my journal throughout the semester so far, and it's working out really well for me. And so I thought, you know, I'd add it to the free course, um, and then also it's added to my full course as well. And you can also get PDF versions of it if you're part of the Ever Educating community on my blog. So it's in my resource library. And so I have a link below as well in case you want to join the community that way. You'll basically get a newsletter when I have a new blog post come up and you have access to all the PDFs I curate in connection to my material. And so in this case, what I'm doing here, so as you can see, my plan for the week versus the reality of the week. And so I have this set up where it's just, you know, large boxes for each. And so you can see here an example. And so this is what it looks like in my physical journal. I have, you know, Tuesday and Thursday is the, the schedule that I use. And so I have, okay, what do I want to happen on Tuesday? And so I have, okay, explain the new homework. I always explain the homework for that night in the beginning. It's just to make sure I don't forget it by the end of the class period if we get on a roll. And then after that, we'll discuss the videos from the homework that they did for that day, go over my Google Slides lecture, use Mentimeter for anonymous questions, and I have a whole video about that that I'll link below. And then time for drafting, because that's the part of the paper unit we're at at the moment. And then at the very end, just do a quick homework reminder so they remember to do that for Thursday's class. And then on Thursday, you know, as you can see here, so that 01, the finished drafting time, well, my plan was to do all these things on Tuesday, but then in reality, in my first section, you know, answering questions took longer than anticipated. And so I'm going to give more time for drafting on Thursday because it didn't have as much as they needed, right? And then I also put here something that I got a lot of questions about or there seemed to be a lot of confusion about. And so just a reminder to myself, maybe create a short video about that particular topic. But in my second section, the biggest question was about internal transitions versus paragraph transitions. So make sure to include that information in this video I'm going to be creating. And then I also just kind of noted down, seem distracted when drafting. So I do take notes on student behavior in my journal as well. Okay, so this is not an exact thing that I did in class. It's an example of what I would put in my teaching journal. And so on the Thursday under plan, I had that 01 finished drafting time to remind myself it's only my first section that needs that. My second section, I go straight to the next point, which once again is explaining the homework for that night. 
asking if they have any questions you know so far in the unit then i do my next lecture i have a class activity planned have some hopefully some time for class discussion and then like usual my homework reminder and so on Thursday, you know, I mentioned in section one, there was a Zoom issue, right? I, I rarely get tech working in both my classes perfectly. So I mentioned in a one, I couldn't hear some students. And then I didn't get to the last intro example, unsurprisingly, because the tech were taking me more time to fix. Whereas in O2, I noted down something that they were really interested in when talking about intros. And then I also mentioned that we got through all the intros there. Okay, so I have here, what's my plan for each day? And then what's the reality? And so when I get home from work, I always write out the reality sections, you know, that same day, that same Tuesday, that same Thursday. And then I'll see a plan Thursday, you know, either Wednesday, or if I've already done it, I might just tweak Thursday's plans that I had already prepared. So that's one version. But I also have this type of layout as well. And again, you can get this linked below if you're part of the community or you can get it with a free notebook. And here I have these bottom sections. And so all I did was, you know, everything from this top section is the same as before. I just made the text, the actual font smaller to make sure it all fits in this first part. That's one reason I really like uh, good notes and using a digital journal. It's very easy to just copy and paste and resize things. But on the bottom, I'm using these two blank sections for my to do's. So my to do for Thursday, right? So I taught already on Tuesday is to create that short video and put it on the LMS and to prep for Thursday's intro examples. And then the second one to do for next Tuesday, right? So planning for next week, prep for my direct quotes and paraphrases lecture, create the practice activity for students. And then I'm going to just note to myself that I don't need to do that last intro example for 01 because we went over enough examples already. And so if you prefer having kind of like a task list underneath, that's, you know, a layout that you can use instead if you prefer this way. You might also, you know, mention in these two bottom sections if there were tech issues on Tuesdays or Thursdays rather than putting it in the reality section on top. Really, you can do whatever you want with it. But this is an example of how my teaching journal works this semester. So every single week I have, here's what I plan on doing. And then right next to it, I have, okay, but this is the reality of what actually happened. So I think this can work really well. And then obviously, you know, the next section would just be the other section that I teach of the same course. And then, you know, in this free one, you have three of them. So if you teach three courses, that's fine. And my full course has six sections in case you teach more. And then you can also have that planner version, which has 12 sections. It was really up to you to decide um, what might fit best. Of course, you don't need to use a digital one. You can use just your physical journal or your own uh, digital journal that you might already have, you know, prepared for yourself. If you want more behind the scenes looks at synchronous teaching tips and ideas, go ahead and click like on this video and then go ahead and check out my full playlist about synchronous teaching that I've linked on the screen now. If not, you can check out other EdTech and online teaching tutorials, as well as just college teaching tips and tutorials throughout this channel. If you're not subscribed yet, now's the time to do so.